And I'm joined by Homie. What up? And today we're going to be talking about elitism slash gatekeeping in games. Just the kind of the feeling that you know you you join a, a new gaming community. Maybe you're just starting the game out, or maybe you just like been playing for a little bit, but you want to take your game to the next level. And there's just a lot of rampant elitism, kind of people sticking their noses up at you because you're not as good as they are, or just like gatekeeping, like, oh, you're not a part of this community unless you reach a certain rank, or et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so Homie said he had some experience with this, so tell us about your experience. Right, so I have experience on both ends of this, both the gatekeeper and the gatekeepy. Uh, well, not like so much on the gatekeeper side, you know. It's like minor stuff. But I'm going to start off with my, my experience as the victim, quote-unquote. Uh, you know, getting into Valorant, not, you know, I haven't played it yet. Uh, I've been watching videos on it, talking to my friends about it, and some of my friends kind of talking shit because they're like, oh, you can't, uh, you can't, like, be into it because you, you don't have a PC, you know, you can't play it, so you can't be into it. You know, that's probably, like, the biggest gatekeeping thing is when you're not playing it yet and you want to play it. And then people just start talking down to you because you don't have it yet or you can't play it yet. That's a very good point. Um, I mean, this really infuriates me because, for example, like League of Legends, there's no way I can understand enough in that game. Like, if I watch Pro League of Legends, I don't know what goes on. All I just like, I just hear the announcers go, oh, oh, and then the health bars go down and you see the kill feed. And it's like, <laughs> It's like that's that's how I would enjoy League of Legends because I obviously I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time playing and studying it. I mean I've played it, but like I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time studying it and like all these math and like I, I'm not gonna understand anything the pros do. But I'm not watching it for that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what was your experience on the other side as the gatekeeper? Uh, just like you know, sometimes when I play games like Call of Duty, sometimes even Rocket League, you know. And I play with a friend or somebody I know that's like way worse than me. You know, sometimes I'll, you know, talk a little bit of shit. You know, be kind of kind of ignorant to the fact that they're new to the game. You know, nothing major, but you know, just things like that. Yeah, I think uh, I think I kind of fall on that same trap too. Like just talking down to people. It's like, oh, just be up for that sooner. It's like, yeah, it's it's hard. There's a yeah, lot of things going, point. going into being up for that sooner. Like, not only do you have to read the ball, you have to get your takeoff right, you have to get your angle right if you have to adjust. It's Rocket League, for example, is a very difficult game, and I'm sure they all are. Um, Call of Duty, at least at the lower levels, doesn't seem too bad because you can three-shot people mm -hmm. in the dick and they just die. <laughs> but I'm sure higher-level Call of Duty is, is a lot more involved. Yeah, definitely. But I was inspired by this, uh, ep for this episode, by this video where basically uh, some chess people were bitching that Hikaru Nakamura was doing games with X XQC and Wreckful and these other streamers. And they're, they're, I guess their argument is that, you know, uh, Nakamura wants to inflate his own viewership by, like, taking some of XQC's fans after they watch oh. him in XQC. And it's like yeah. poaching viewership. I mean, not like poaching, but just like increasing his own by like u using a popular streamer. But you know, I think, I think while that might happen, I think it does just does more for the game of chess in general to see XQC. Like if if you're, for example, it's the funniest fucking thing. XQC playing Wreckful is like the best chess the, video ever. But the wooden shield. <laughs> the, the wooden shield. But if you. If you, uh, even if XQC is being stupid and say, saying dumb shit like the wooden shield, it still is, it's fun, it engages you, and it's good for all levels of people, whether you're in a chess or not. And maybe it could get people in a chess. I just feel like it does more good for the community 
than bad, even if they're playing like totally shit. Like they're not dicking around. They're not trying to lose. But it's just not Magnus Carlsen. I just don't understand why people. There's a lot of elite elitists up there that that don't appreciate what Nakamura is doing. You know, trying to engage these multiple communities together. Yeah, I feel like you know chess is one of those one of those uh, games that has the most severe case of that elitism. You know, not saying that other games don't have it, but chess I feel like definitely is up there just based on how advanced like the higher level play is compared to the lower level you know even though it's mostly just just memorization but i feel like that can kind of get to people's heads sometimes well that's and that goes for every game yeah i mean that goes for every game like the top uh the top one percent is just so much better than the the, the mm-hmm. lower 99 percent, no matter what i yeah. think chess is chess is interesting because when i first uh when I first went to chess club, uh, they were like, they were like, well, you know, here's what we have going on. We have these tournaments and you can do them. It was, I mean, it wasn't the most welcoming thing on the planet, but it was, they were pretty welcoming. They always like to see new people come to their, their chess club and, and play games. Obviously they make money, uh, from your entry fee, but you know, it, you still feel welcome and they try to find you games. Even if, uh, like I had it since my rating is asked cause my, th- cause in third grade I sucked. Uh, I had a buy round, and the the director still tried to find me a game of people who weren't playing in the tournament. And it's like, well, you can play this this other game uh, with this guy, so you like don't waste your time, you know. So that mm. was that was nice. But I could see online. I think there's a lot of elitis- elitism too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and and like you were saying, that does apply to every game. You know. Like, uh, like Rocket League, for example, you know, you got a lot of pros such as like Flakes, who, you know, Flakes, I find he's just extremely overconfident. I don't like him. As a player, he's good, but as a person, I don't really like him. You know, he just seems extremely cocky and kind of a bitch sometimes. It's just based on what I've seen on like Twitter and some stuff from YouTube and everything like that. Perhaps he is. Uh, my old roommate in college was in the top 100 he was actually pretty high up and he ended up being on a team with like a money and some other guy i've never heard of um and he like he was really good but he was just so cocky and i heard that none of the pros liked him because he was so cocky mm. and it's just like i didn't even like playing with him i'm sure i I'm, well i know for sure i had a lot to learn from him but i didn't like playing with him because he would just kind of be a dick the whole time like he was like did a thing and he was like oh I should have known you wouldn't be up for that or whatever. You're not, you know, you don't do that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like the fuck is that supposed to mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And also going back to what I was saying about flakes, you know, kind of, I just remembered something about that, about him. He actually left Barcelona to make his own team because he wants to build a team around him. You know, he's a little bit self-centered, I guess, <laughs> like literally he's building the team around him. He's the Russell Westbrook of Rocket League. Exactly. <laughs> Just, just man, uh, man, we managed to type professional sports into video games. What a fucking year we live in. That's right. <laughs> just everyone else box out when he gets the rebounds. <laughs> yeah. Can yeah, you two just just sit in net and and I'll go ball chase? It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, part part of it, yeah. I mean, part of it is the elitism. Like, you can't feel like you can't have an opinion on a game. Like, oh, here's a problem in Rocket League, you know? Or it's like here would be. Here, how you make the matchmaking system better? Oh well, pff, you're only goal two. What the fuck do you know? It's, it's like you're allowed. Yes. Like, yes, that is. You might not have huge. the most experience, but you still have a right to an opinion. Exactly. That's what a lot of people don't realize, especially people that are like you know higher up in most games. They don't realize that it doesn't matter what rank you are. If you play the game, you have a right to have an opinion on what the game could be doing better. Could be taken out they what they could put in you know you can still have your own opinions on that it doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game how good you are exactly and that's that's what's called the log uh it's a logical fallacy called argument from authority it's like oh well i have Mm -hmm. i have a phd next to my name for example so i know what i'm talking about same thing with games you don't need to be grand champ to see flaws in games yeah that's that's a really good point there you know all levels can see flaws within games it's not just the higher players you know because 
even though the higher players might seem more, I guess, you know, based on like, you know, based on personal experience, you know, me and you, we've had a lot of experience with the shitty matchmaking that Rocket League has. And, you know, even people that are in silver, gold, bronze, they probably have experience with that as well. You know, they're, they're probably thinking, oh, this matchmaking system's garbage. It's, it's not just us. You know, it's everybody's able to see those types of flaws. They're just flaws in general, not just the high-ranked players. Precisely. I mean... The, the thing is, is the, the pros, and, and I was listening to this, like, interview of, like, what would CSGO, what could, it was, like, one thing CSGO could change, and obviously it's, like, nerf the Krieg, I think that's been nerfed, uh, Valorant coming out made CSGO have a lot of updates, but nerf the Krieg, get rid of Vertigo, stuff like that, and, and Rush, who, I kind of, I don't, obviously don't know any of these players, but I kind of like Rush. Uh, he was like, well, I think Valve needs to have more dialogue with the pros. And it's like, I'm sure that the pros have very good insight onto CS, but the game isn't just for pros. And CS has evolved in such a way where all, like every CS Go stream is like a pro, like they're, they're streaming their game, or it's like a tournament. There's no like casual, unless it's like a hot chick, there's no casual CS Go players like, you know, going or walking around in silver, getting shit on, and part of it's because no one wants to watch that shit. But part of it's just because the game has evolved, where it's it just seems like it's gotten so competitive. No one even has fun anymore. It's all about just winning. Yeah, I feel like that could be that that is a cause of you know some of the elitism is just really only focusing on winning. You know, that's just they're so obsessed with winning, so obsessed with being on the top. They don't care about anybody below them they just care about being the best they don't have any regards to people that are lower ranked than them lower in scale or whatever they don't care i mean that's that's why people smurf number one to shit on noobs and then they get their rocks off to that and number two and people's like oh well my main you know i don't want to touch that rank but you know i can dick around on this account it's you know you should just ranks like i was saying this this uh, this whole week, I was like, Rocket League rank doesn't shouldn't matter, but it does. And like, it, I I think I think what I actually said was it doesn't matter, but it does. And it's like, you're you know obviously like you can queue with any rank, uh, with like with your friends. There's no like limit like they did for like two weeks before they got removed. But you know it's this it's the rank is like a status symbol, like a Ferrari or something like that. You know, and, and people people take too much pride in it and realize that for ninety nine point nine percent of the player base, that it's just a game. You're not it's not your career. And and you know, the point zero one percent or however much it is, just like tries to hijack the game and just try to you know I guess I guess they, they're like, Oh, we're at the top of the game, which means they're also the gatekeepers. And I don't think that makes you the... I think Psyonix is the... Slash Epic Games are the only gatekeepers, and the pros certainly have their influence, but they they shouldn't be able to call the shots. It's Or it's like tell people that they should go fuck off because they're not good enough. I feel like another like way they're gatekeeping, you know, uh, Psyonix, Epic Games, another, another way they're gatekeeping is how, how easy it is to smurf. It's ridiculous. Because, you know, with... On PC, you know, it's fine. You know, you gotta pay for another copy of the game if you want to be on a different account. You know, that's fine. But on console, you could just make a new profile and just go right into rank. It doesn't even matter. It's ridiculous how easy it is to smurf. And it's sad. Because they're really fucking over all the bronzes and silvers that just get their asses whooped by these GCs going on a road to GC account, you know? That is bullshit. And I wish there was some, like, gatekeeping, like, oh, you have to play 20 unranked matches or something like that. Yeah, it's uh, like in Valorant, you have to play 20 unranked matches before you could do your, or do ranked, you know? Exactly. And, and that's, that's some gatekeeping that we wish was there, actually. Because yeah. you have these players, and they're getting, they're not playing with the play, people they should play with. It, it, that only, like, if you, if you load, launch into Rocket League, you're all like, oh, like, I'm gonna play my like third rank game ever. Like this is exciting, and you just get shit on by Squishy Muffins because he's smurfing. You're not it makes you not want to play. Squishy Muffins should play the people who are around his skill level, and the the noobs should play other noobs. 
just a huge problem, and the, the, it's the worst. Maybe chess is worse. I've yet to get involved with the chess community, but League of Legends is the worst. It is the worst. Everyone smurfs, and then they'll like, like I remember being like level fucking three. Like it was like my second ever five v five online game, and there was a smurf on our team who was flaming me for everything, and it's like. It's like, well, you're such a noob, you're making all these mistakes. Like, yes, I am a noob. This is my fucking second game ever. Like, what do you fucking expect me to just understand League of Legends at a fundamental level after only playing it twice? It's just, it just really infuriates me how that shit, how people do that and just expect new players to just play like them. Yeah, because cause they smurf, and then when they're playing in the lower ranks, which they know they're going to be, they expect me to play like the fucking pro players or some shit. It's ridiculous. They just expect way too much out of random teammates when they're smurfing and they're at lower ranks than they're normally at. So they're thinking way too highly of them. They're just ruining this... the fun. It does. It does ruin the fun. It. It honestly is what made me quit playing League. It just felt like every other game there was a fucking smurf or I would. I, I'm real. I'm pretty bad, but I always get like flamed and stuff. It's so toxic. But here's a theory, and you tell me if you agree with this theory. It's like, let's say an individual is like, I don't know, searching for things to do or whatever, and they find like, let's say Rocket League, uh, yeah. and they're really good at Rocket League, they have an innate talent, and they rise up the ranks really quick, and they're like, I don't know, GC or something, really fast. And then they see other people like start climbing to GC, and they're like, they're like, oh, I mean, the pros are, are, are saying it's easy, too easy to get GC. But they're like, oh, you know, it's way too easy to get GC. Do you think they're saying that because they they have they finally found this, like, community or whatever? Or, like, this this badge of honor, I guess, uh, GC, like, they're in the GC community. And they want the exclusivity of it. So if it expands, they just feel like it's infringing on them because it makes their community meaningless because it's gotten bigger. First of all, does that make sense? And second of all, do you agree with that? It does make complete sense. I completely agree with that. And yeah, both. I, it makes sense and I agree with that. And one thing that, you know, I feel like Sonics could do to help with that sort of thing, it wouldn't help directly, but, you know, making the game free to play would attract a lot more players. It would grow the player base substantially. And to satisfy all the, you know, fucking sweaty ass TTV GCs, it would make the percentage of GCs of the player base smaller. So it's more of a, well, I mean, GC's already top 5%, isn't it? No, it's like top 1, I think. Exactly. I don't know why they're complaining. They're literally top 1%. Because champ 1, or champ 2, is already top 10%. All right, think about that. And that's three ranks away from the highest rank in the game. That's already top 10% there. Uh, yeah, and oh, then... Just thinking about top 10%, I mean, it's like take 10 random Rocket League players. You're better than 9 of them. Like exactly, that's really yeah. fucking good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy to think about, you know, and it's crazy to think about like, like, like you were saying, the people who just have that that innate talent and just rise up the ranks quickly. You know, I feel like I'm one of those people because not even a thousand hours in, and I was already at champ one. But think, I mean, the uh, so the the ranks are just based on percentages. So if we, mm -hmm. if, like, let's say Rocket League gets a hundred thousand new players. And, and if, if GC is 1%, which I don't know if it is, and they get 100,000 new players, that means they're having 1,000 new GCs. And some of those GCs are probably going to be boosted for one reason or another. And that makes the GCs who, let's say, deserve it, they're going to get pissed because they they share this badge of honor, I guess, with people who don't deserve it. They're going to be bitches. Yeah, exactly. They turn into bitches because they want... They don't want their uh, accomplishments or, or whatever getting disrupted. And then, then they start gatekeeping. Yeah, because they they want to keep that sense of accomplishment. They don't want other people to really... Well, it's, it's not that they don't want people to feel that. They don't want other people taking that away from them. They want to be like, yeah, look at me. You know, I'm one of very few people that have this. So look at me. I'm so good. That's exactly right. And if people, if people are boosted and have like the... Grand Champ title, but they clearly don't deserve it. It makes it mean less. Yeah, yeah, because, because then you got, you know, me over here in Champ One looking at them like, 
the fuck is this guy doing? This guy's mm-hmm. definitely like a diamond too. How does he have a GC title? Because because that makes me think, oh, if he can get one, then I surely deserve it because I'm definitely better than him. You know? Exactly. Maybe he doesn't deserve it. But then you feel you feel inadequate, and people people just they use their. I don't think they intend to do this, but a lot of them, you know, they 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 use their ranking system as like a club to stop arguments. Because I remember reading through some comments section, and the guys were, the guy was like talking shit about how he was like grand champ and how you know the other guy who commented before him is probably like a silver, and therefore he, what he said didn't matter at all. And it just Rocky Lee got too hyper competitive. They put Rumble in rank. They put Hoops in rank. They put Drop Shot in rank. They put Snow Day in rank. Why is that a thing? Why do they make that a thing? I hate it so much. <laughs> like, like literally, just earlier today, I was trying to play Hoops, and I was getting sweated on by some dude who's probably GC in threes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can't... You. It just seems like you can't have fun anymore unless you play casual... Which, There's no fun unless you're in casual or private matches with your friends. Yeah, or obviously, even then that gets stale sometimes. Yeah, or obviously you like you like trying to have fun and rank, but like that's like a more mindset thing. But there's no like, oh, go screw around mode except for casual, which is awful because people just leave and join and it's chaotic. And I always drop frames like shit when people like disconnect or reconnect. Yeah, and rumble, but. Since it's ranked, it's become Since mega toxic. Rank, everyone sweats, it's it's yeah. extremely toxic and sweaty. It's ridiculous. It's 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 worse than regular threes. I bet. Like, yeah, like like you got guys that are champ two in that, but they're like gold three and actual threes, and and I think they're all that because they're champ two in rumble. <laughs> it's 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 hilarious. I don't play much ranked rumble, and uh, I regret nothing. Yes, you. <laughs> Don't 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 get into it. I'm I'm champ one in it right now. <laughs> oh well, I, you're champ I, one in three, so that makes sense. I Me mean, personally, I like trying hard in Rocket League because um, I'm pretty competitive. But at the same time, casual's just it's just awful. You can't ever just go and chill in there. It, it like people just mm-hmm. they get down two goals and they just leave. Yeah. And. And I wish there was some kind of like thing like league, like you get banned or something like that if you if you leave casuals or, or some other system to where you don't you wouldn't have to play rank to get a fucking full game in. I, I mean the best memory I have playing Rocket League is we were playing Chaos, and I think this is like I don't know if at this time I hit bronze one or not, but this is back in season one where you had to actually grind to bronze one, and I, I mean that was really bad. I think I like just hit it. And we were playing Chaos, and it was so much fun. We were having a good time. Like, it it didn't really matter if we won or lost. We were, like, laughing. We got hyper every time we scored. It was amazing. That's my best Rocket League memory. And, like, I've placed... I've I've won some, like, lesser, like, Battlefight tournaments that really didn't mean anything. But, like, even even getting Champ 1 the first time, getting Champ 3 the first time, that... Memory of chaos is the best Rocket League memory I have. Past all those other accomplishments. Oh, and I guess unless you're like fucking Kronobi and getting champ three is something you do in your sleep, in which case I should just go get fucked. But to, you know, all those accomplishments are nothing just compared to me just having fun in chaos. And I just feel like going try hard has kind of ruined that. Yeah, just. All in all, hyper competitivity, just you know, all that shit is just ruining games in general. They're just not fun to play anymore. Yeah, this is good conversation, but I'm gonna end the episode. Thank you for watching or listening. Later.